Hello everyone and welcome to the Brog. I'm Adam Josh. You are inside my head. So you're Adam Josh too. We're all Adam Josh. I'm a comedian and the last 29 years of my life has been an impromptu, hands-on, interactive, in-your-face type joke. I'm here on camera for you to entertain you, but you're inside my head, so I'm actually just ent entertaining myself. It's crazy when you think about it, when I think about it. There's a blue bus pulling in the front here, and that's creepy. So, welcome to the uh, Brog. And uh, I figured I would do sort of like a impromptu review of my 20s, seeing as how uh, I'm 20 days away now from turning 30. 20 days away from turning 30. I have uh, fruit flies in here, which is weird because I don't have fruit. I thought maybe it would in here. I thought maybe they were coming from the plant. I don't know. So you might see me batting fruit flies away. I'm not trying to kill them, I just don't want them in my face. I don't want to breathe up these little fruit flies. Uh, so yeah, my 20s. I tweeted this morning that I, when I was younger, I tried to remove a tattoo off my chest from with a uh, soldering iron and then with a cigar, and then finally with an expensive laser. True story. It was a stupid mistake. The first tattoo I ever got, if you want to talk about tattoos, not that I really, I'm not really like a tattoo guy. I'm not really, I know I have a few, but I'm not like, hey man, let's talk about tattoos all day, you know? But anyway, if you want to talk about tattoos for a minute, uh, the first one I got was this biohazard on my uh, forearm, and uh, I guess I've always been sort of crazy and weird, you know, as far back as I can remember being like four or five years old, being doing silly crazy things, saying crazy things. People watch these videos that I do and wonder like, what makes you so special, Adam? You're arrogant, you're a narcissist, look at you, on the video camera, who cares? You know, and all I can say is <laughs> I'm never going to stop until I'm dead. You look at my life and uh, this is what I've done. Like, this is what I do. Uh, even <laughs> even before, uh, like before uh, the internet and stuff like that, you know, I was, I've always sort of been in bands and played shows and played my own music. And uh, I remember music class, I wasn't 20. I, don't, I think I started a topic and uh, somehow we got here. It's story time today, so relax, grab a, grab a V8. In music class in grade eight, we had to do a project, you know, do, do something musical and put it on video. Where they were, they'd give us a camera and all that. So what we did, was we, a buddy of mine and me, we started a band called The Jerks. I, the Jerks may be the first band I, I was ever in. I, don't, I was really young, I know that. It was before the Queen Mary show that somebody filmed and put on YouTube. If you Google Rage Me by The Jerks, Queen Mary, you'll, or YouTube it, you'll find me. I'm the prepubescent lead singer with blonde hair and now the boss is backing out and driving away. That's creepy. Like Herbert. Hello, children. Come on the blue bus. So music class in grade eight, we're down in my basement. And I got my imitation Fender Starburst guitar uh, from China. Uh, one of my first guitars, maybe, maybe, I don't remember. I think, I think it was that guitar. And, <clears throat> I put on the, the top hat, the slash top hat, and I had a Guns N' Roses t-shirt on, and I didn't know how to play, like, I later, I learned how to play, like, basic blues and ba basic slide, uh, and 
scale progression stuff. Back then, I knew E minor and G, and G. So, you know, I'm like, you know, somebody's in the back keeping a beat, and I'm like, solo! Dun, 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 you know, I had no idea. I was just E, G, really fast. I'm soloing like Slash. That's a funny story. So I, uh, before Nirvana, I, re you know, I didn't know what to do with myself. I, uh, for music, I listened to uh, Guns N' Roses for a long time. And you know what? There's still, you. it's hard to not admit that Use Your Illusion 1 and 2 are not overall good albums. I mean, Lies, 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 Appetite for Destruction. Come on, man. Everybody loves... <coughs> Who doesn't love that song? Come on. Sweet Child of Mine. You gotta hand it to Slash, too. I mean, hands down, he's a pretty decent guitarist. And uh, I know some really good guitarists, too, you know? And that's a tricky thing, because you can be like an amazing guitarist and not even be in a band. Like, I know some amazing creme de la creme of musicians. I really know, I know personally several really, really good musicians. Better than what? Better than anything I hear on the radio. Almost, yeah, most most stations, but... And they're not in bands. One works, um... Doing, uh, you know, metal work. One, uh... One's out west, you know. One smokes a lot of weed. Uh, one was a kid. Like, the, the guitarist for Mr. Meaner, if you go, um... To my website, adamjosh.com... And uh, and go to the links section. You'll see the band Mr. Meaner. The guitarist for that band, Nick uh, Hefner, not Hefner, Hefner. We used to have fun with that. He uh, is so talented, so talented. Last time I talked to him, he's like, "Yeah, I'm going to going to school for ironwork." I'm like, "What are you doing for you know your music?" Well, you know, I record when I can, but so. That's a travesty and, and a damn shame that not everybody who should be in positions of prominence are. I guess that's just the way it is. I'm not trying to secretly speak about myself here, um, but maybe I am. No, I'm not. I don't, you know, whatever. See, I look at my whole music scenario as like I've always done what I'm doing and I probably will always do it till I'm dead and I look at it as like as long as I have arms and legs like nobody can stop me from playing music you know and so the promotion aspect of it and uh, playing gigs to lots of people or a small amount of people that's an entirely other animal uh, than playing music. You can play music and so can these guys who are working iron iron working jobs. <clears throat> so I guess me bemoaning the fact that uh, I just feel like they're so good that you, you know, when you turn on the radio, I'd rather be listening to my friends than listening to people I don't know, I guess is my point. But we live in an area here that would rather hear cover bands, and would it's it's weird. I know it's not like this all over the world, and it's probably not like it where you are. But in the area here, I guess the venue owners and the people themselves are sort of to blame. But people here would rather hear cover bands on the weekend. They just nod their head to play the hip, play the hip. There's bands around here that just refuse to play the hip, not because they don't like them, but because they're just tired of hearing it. The hip, play the hip. And, you know, talented, super talented re musicians reduce themselves to, like, uh, put a quarter in my in my slot and let me play you a tune, and that's not good either. But then, sometimes they're like, well, you know, I work 9 to 5 on the week, and this is my chance to play music and have fun, so if you want to look at it like that, then... Speaking of really talented musicians, Kaler, Rick's son, is really talented. Uh, Kaler Legacy, uh, you could Google him, I suppose. He works, as far as I know right now, uh, at Long and McQuaid. So, I mean, he's around guitars all day, but... Pe these people that I know, like, what they need is, like, money, I guess. Like, a lot of money to get into a studio, 
record all their stuff and have people, you know, be able to afford to bring people in and then afford to pay promoters. All of these things cost money, you know, and without that capital or somebody to loan it to you, then you're just a super talented musician uh, that can play for your friends and family. And then there's some people that uh, that are like, yeah, so what? I'm a super talented musician and I can play for myself and for my friends and family. That's good enough for me. Some people are like that. <clears throat> My crazy 20s. Stories from my 20s. So the tattoo on my chest, backing up, was of uh, the Nirvana Nevermind album. Just really silly. I, they've had an interview with uh, that kid since he's grown up, but it was a baby. So after my first tattoo, I was, uh, I was so excited that uh, I got a tattoo because I was with somebody who looked older, so they assumed that I was old enough, but I was and I was like 16 years old. You should, you know, be like, I think you have to be like 18 or 19 to get a tattoo. I was 16 or something like that. I was still in high school. And, uh, uh somebody's coming in here, I think. Hi. 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 <laughs> How's your day today? All right. You have a few minutes here and there, maybe? So we're spare? recording a video right now. If you want to be on it, you can. No. <laughs> well, I'm too late we'll, now. We'll say no. I'm not going to edit this, so you're on it now. No, I am not. It's pointing you. Yeah, okay. What's up? <laughs> Try not to say any phone numbers or names, because it goes on YouTube when I'm done. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> well, are you crazy? I have my own website, adamjarks.com. Oh, oh, yeah? Man. <laughs> you're nuts. No, I just... Uh, to finish that truck, I need a little roller and a paintbrush, and I just thought maybe you go. I can't really leave. I probably could for the five minutes, but do you still have the card for the yeah. store down the road? Yeah. So yeah, well, I'll go do it. Okay. Like I, I just, I'll show you what I need. Just the small rollers, not the full ones. Yeah, I'll be there in like ten minutes. And a little package of paintbrushes would be great. Yeah, no problem. I'll okay. show you. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye. So, I've always been silly crazy, no matter, like I said, my whole life is a comedic joke, and uh, our staff, and uh, my friends and family, you know, they can think I'm crazy and silly, and that's fine with me. <clears throat> I, uh, you know, not everybody agrees with me. I have friends and family that uh, don't, that think I'm nuts about a lot of things, but that's, that's fine with me. Uh, so back to the tattoo thing, uh, yeah, so it was the Nirvana Nevermind album, and I mean, I'd show you my chest, but you can't see anything, it's not, it's not there, so I went to go for laser surgery, and, uh, it took, I think, two sessions, it was pretty light, and it, it got taken off, so it was a, it was a dumb thing to do, because it's, if you know the Nirvana Nevermind album, it's, a naked baby floating in water, you know, with the, the dollar sign. And I didn't have the dollar sign, but I had the the baby. It was just so dumb. And I, for me, I was a really big Nirvana fan at the time, and I was like, this, the Kurt had just died. And I thought, you know, this is this would be my way to remember him. My friend got a tattoo, the, ha the Nirvana happy face, with uh, the word apathy underneath. Not the greatest idea either, probably, but, uh, it looks cool, his tattoo. And uh, me, I couldn't handle it. Like, I think as soon as I hit, like, so I had it and then I was young, like 16, 17, like I said, and after a while, I couldn't handle it. I was like, I want this thing off of me. 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 So I got ice one night and put it on my chest and I'm like, whoa, what if I just scabbed it up, you know? And so I got a soldering iron and I don't recommend doing that to anybody, you know, anybody to do that. So when, when, and it, it worked a bit, but then, you know, it left the scab scar. So it was silly because then I'll have an outline. So yeah, luckily the uh, laser surgery stuff also removes like light scarring. So anyway, like I said, you can't see it now. There's probably pictures of my chest somewhere on the internet. So I'm not gonna show you my chest now. Not in the uh, adamjosh.com 
headquarters. I uh, I don't maybe you know some people like to, some people like to say I keep my business and my work separate. I guess there's certain things that I that sort of mix around. That's not really true for anybody, you know, like cause when you're at work, you're calling your friends, you're texting your friends. Is that keeping your business and your work separate? I don't know. Or your business and your personal life? I mean, you are, your per you carry your personal life with you, so I don't know. My website and uh, my music and all that stuff is so a part of me that uh, whoever I am, it's there too. So that's sort of how this is. And... Uh, You know? My crazy 20s. I guess part of this is, uh, you know, really staying true to the word brog, the past tense of the past tense of brog. I usually don't sit and just brag, and I think bragging sort of is setting yourself up for a fall, and I'm not looking at all this as bragging, but I suppose uh, looking back on this in a few years, I might be like, Adam, that was silly, just sitting there bragging. So hey, future me. Sorry about that. Sorry about this telling stories about my 20s. Usually I keep them, keep them to myself. So that was silly. What else can I tell you? Crazy stories. I jumped in the BC River. Uh, it was freezing cold. Uh, it was so dumb. And it was sort of like a dare. I jumped in it and then uh, immediately regretted it and turned right around. Uh, we were driving, it was right near, uh, we were probably near, Gold, near Golden, B.C. at that point. Uh, I was 20, I want to say 25, 26, 27, around there, I don't know, a few years ago. If you go to, uh, Google and type in, uh, The Adams Show, uh, you'd see it. Anyway, it was, it was sort of fun. Crazy stories. See, now my mind is elsewhere. I'm already thinking about the things I gotta go do today now because of this guy coming in here. <sighs> I'll get in so much as I say. Is it egotistical to like your own music? I mean, why do you record? Unless it's purely just for money, right? Unless you like your own music. See, I like my own music, and I think that that sort of satisfaction of... <clears throat> of that spot where you're like, okay, it's good. That's you liking your music, right? Otherwise, you're constantly doing it for other people, which sort of means you're a sellout, I guess, because you're doing it for money and other people. I don't know. Then the other part of me other part of me thinks I'm sort of like if you flash back you know to the dark ages, all musicians would be like those those guys that come in and entertain the kings and queens. You know, we're just the sort of joker people here to entertain you doing our monkey dance. You know, and now because of our screwed up society, we idolize the, the monkey dancers and the musicians and all that who are entertaining the kings and the masses. I don't know. But we're not living in the Renaissance. We're not living back in those days. We're living now. Then I froze up and I blurted, make me an honest man. Hold that ring tight and blow a kiss to the sky. Yeah, you know you're my angel. But don't try to fly. Here, I know you're not here. But baby, we're not alone. And that'll have to do, since there's no promises home. When you look at the stars at night, imagine my eyes. And the tears that are falling. And the ones that are falling are tears of surprise. Because I never thought I'd say this. But I'm ready for kids. I'm really not. I know he'll make someone mommy's little girl. And that's how it is. So remember, there's life out there. We're like a million to one. 
as I send you this song from Mars, Colony One. So, oh, this is the part where I press stop and uh, upload this to YouTube and my website, and then uh, people make fun of me and critique me. You know, instead of making fun of me or critiquing me, why don't you do something productive? Um, like get your own website and make your own videos. Critiquing, critiquing. Well, then there's the constructive criticism, like, hey, Adam, uh, instead of rambling on about uh, your crazy life and stroking your ego and all that, why don't you... Uh, talk about fluoride in the tap water, or why don't you talk about chemtrails, or the government, or corrupt, co corrupt this, or corrupt that. Eh. Today, I don't want to. There's other days for that. Should have had a V8. I gotta go get to these other things that I have to do. But I wanted to take this time to do a little update. What else can I tell you? Uh, an update. Uh, yeah. There's things that I, I was thinking about, but I don't want to. Crazy 20s, man. There's lots of stories I can tell you from my 20s. Maybe I'll do a part two to this sometime when I think of some more. One time, I'll tell you this one. One time I was in uh, Prince Edward Island and uh, my buddy John and I were there. We, and while we were there, we thought, let's go see the Trailer Park Boys film set. So we went down to the uh, trailer <coughs> in Dartmouth, uh, Halifax, Dartmouth, small city. Well, I don't know. It's in Halifax anyway. Nova Scotia area, you know what I mean? I don't know. Out east, I went to Dartmouth, and there's this road there. I mean, I could show you if you need, really needed to know. And, uh, you know, they have the TPB productions out, out, outside. And uh, we snuck in and got chased out. We went into Leahy's trailer. That was sort of funny. We got chased out and uh, went back to the hotel. Mm hmm. I can tell you stories about crazy shows that we've done, that I've played, or whatever. I don't know. There's lots of time for that. And uh, my 30th birthday's coming up, and I just felt sort of. Uh, you know, it's sort of hard for me not to start reflecting on my 20s as I'm going into my 30s. And uh, I don't think that's egotistical or narcissistical. Is narcissistical a word? But uh, it is what it is. So I wrote three songs about turning 30. So Long 20s, Oh Hello 30s, and Awesome Maximus. The last song that I wrote, I Can't Do This Anymore, it really isn't a song, it's just a string of words with the same four chords or three chords. But it felt good to sing it, you know what I mean? Is that is that wrong, that it felt good to sing it? It felt good to say things, like, I've been married and divorced in my 20s, and engaged again, and that didn't work. I'm single right now. So, I'm really hard to be around, I guess. Um, hmm. So, uh, where was I going with that? So I, I wrote, you know, I wrote a few songs, and in the songs, I did like Eminem has done, and, you know, overly aggressive with people, projecting it into the song, like, killing people, murdering people in songs. Not... Not the best way to deal with it, probably, but cathartic nonetheless, and here we are, and I don't write songs about killing people anymore, so... I heard Maynard... I'm not comparing myself to Maynard or Eminem or anybody like that, I'm just t telling stories. Maynard, I heard May Maynard once, uh, from Tool, Keenan, Maynard Keenan, say that uh, he used, you know, his early music as a tool for catharsis, you know, to get out his emotions, and he feels like, you know, now... I've gotten it out and I don't want to do that anymore. I have to answer this phone. Alright, so we'll talk later. Thanks for watching. I'm Josh Oral Tell your friends to get a job.